Today we're going to be going over how to use Cloudability to track how well you're doing as a FinOps group. We're going to be going over how you can use dashboard widgets to determine things like how well your reservation coverage is, how to use custom business metrics to generate your FinOps savings and track that as well as talk about the different ways on determining what should qualify or shouldn't qualify as something that is a part of your FinOps savings. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a widget to track how well reservations are being used for the different services that we're buying them for. So the first thing we're gonna do is click add widget. And in this one, we're gonna be looking at usage hours comparison is what we're going to call this chart now we're going to specifically look at the month of january so let's update it there we're going to keep the x-axis the same as date and now we're going to change the y-axis here to usage hours and we're going to change the group by to specifically look at the lease type and then we're going to make it a column chart that's stacked by percentage once we've clicked on all those, we're going to click on preview to look at the chart that we've created. What you see here is that this is breaking down over the time frame of the month, how much is being covered by savings plans with the cloud uses that we have versus how much is not covered, which is considered on demand. Now, one of the pitfalls with these charts is that this is actually aggregating every single service. In this case, savings plans don't cover things like an S3 bucket. So what we really want to do is actually narrow this down to find out which services are being covered and the opportunities they're in for those particular services. So we're going to add a filter. We're specifically going to add the service name equaling AWS EC2, where we can purchase savings plans for them. And now if we look at the reservation coverage for that, you can see that the savings plans are now covering about 66% overall of the AWS EC2 usage over time. So what I would recommend is make a chart for every single service that you want to purchase a reservation for, whether that be a commit use discount or a reserved instance or savings plan. The idea is you want to track over time to see what kind of coverage you have for each one of these reservations. And by looking at the lease type and looking at the specific service names, you can create charts like this, or we could actually change it into a filled in line chart like this to track over time, okay, how well are we covering the different services we're consuming here at our, our company? And if we have like low coverage, for example, let's say only 10% of the EC2 usage was a savings through a savings plan. Well, then there would be opportunities there where, hey, let's go purchase something. Let's cover, at least get half of the different services we're using covered by reservations instead of only 10%. So this is one way to graphically look at what's being generated. However, it doesn't actually tell you how much money is being saved. So with that, I want to turn this over to a report to kind of explain what you can do to track your total savings that are being generated. So here in this report, what we're looking at is two different metrics. One is called the cost list and one is called the cost amortize. Now here's a caveat is that cost list works for AWS and cloudability. It works for a few services within Azure and does not work for GCP. Um, the primary reason for this is that AWS is very transparent for their on-demand pricing and the other cloud service providers are less so transparent. So what you'll see is at the top here, there's a cost list of $88.90 and there's a cost amortized of $84.49. What we're looking at here is that if we didn't have a discount, as in we didn't buy a savings plan, the cloud usage that we had would have cost over the last seven days, $88.90 because we purchased a reservation, in this instance, a savings plan, 
that actually only cost us $84.49. Now scroll down here to this table in the report. What you'll see is that the on-demand lease type, which is everything that's not covered by a reservation, will have the cost list and cost amortized be the same because we're not getting a discount on our on-demand usage. Now this is a little misleading in one aspect. If you negotiate an enterprise discount with your cloud service provider, this on-demand cost amortized would actually reflect the discount that you get after the month is closed. Meaning if you negotiate a 22% enterprise program discount with AWS, this $69.42 would be actually 22% less. It would reflect that discount that you negotiated. So what you actually would be seeing is, in this instance, the discount of not only your enterprise program discount, but also the additional savings that you generate by purchasing savings plans and reservations. So now that we have these two numbers, let's go to the top of the screen again to look at the aggregate value. Um, let's pull a calculator out. And now what we can do is take 88.90 minus 84.49. And what you'll see is that there's a total savings of $4.41. Now, it'd be pretty tedious to, and if, to be fair, you can export this report and do these calculations in Excel. But that is a little time intensive to keep doing that over and over and over again. So instead, what you can do is use business metrics. So if you come here to the help documentation, to the help center, you can go to a page called Customize Your Costs Using Business Metrics. What this page talks about is instead of doing that manual work of taking the cost list minus cost amortized, instead you could automate that using a business metric. So the first thing about business metrics is that you'll need to actually raise a support case with CloudAbility to get this enabled for your account. Once you have it enabled, then you'll be free to be able to do these updates. The other caveat I want to let you know is that business metrics can only be updated through the API. So you'll need to be a little bit savvy in terms of what you can do with an API, with CloudAbility's API in this case, to create a custom business metric. So when creating a business metric, we're going to go to Postman here in just a second. But let's go back to this report. What you're going to see here is we're looking at the metric cost list and cost amortized. And then here under add metrics, what you will see when you have business metrics enabled and you have one there, there'll be a section where you can click on the business metric that you're creating. So let's go ahead and go here to Postman to talk about the one that we're creating. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is use this URL to create a post statement, which is creating this metric. The next thing you're going to need is a name for the business metric. In this case, we're going to call it FinOp Savings. Here on the number format, we just want to show it in a currency format so we can see how much money we're saving. And then thirdly, this is what's called the default value expression, which is if these rules that we're writing down here don't capture a cost, what should we return instead? Now in this instance, this would be incorrect because we don't actually want to return the total amortized cost. What we actually want to return is the value zero. So for the default value, we want it to be zero because for this metric, we're trying to calculate what the FinOps savings is. So, if it's not a FinOp savings, then we don't want to count it. And therefore we can leave the default value expression as zero. Now here in the statements, this is where the real kind of thinking has to go in, which is what cost do you actually want to track as something where the metric is calculating the FinOp savings. So in this case, we're only going to be looking at Amazon. So in our expressions, we want to include where we're looking at where the vendor equals Amazon, like you see here. The next thing is that we want to look at what is this 
the different lease types that we maybe want to look at. So here, um, there's savings plans, there's reserved for the different lease types, and then there's the ones that aren't covered, which would be called on demand. Now, this is where, this is an internal discussion with your company on what you need to determine whether or not you want to include your enterprise program discount. So let's say I negotiate a 25% discount with AWS based on our committed spend over the next three years. Is that a FinOps saving? Now, in most FinOps groups I work with, they do count that towards their FinOps savings. However, because maybe your FinOps group isn't actually putting a lot of work into driving that, maybe it's not really fair to count it as a FinOps savings. So if you want to include EDP as your enterprise program discount, as a FinOps savings, you would have an expression like this that includes the on-demand lease type. If you don't want to include your enterprise discount as part of FinOps savings, you would leave this expression off and then it would just be defaulted to zero. Um, you, there's another way you can track how well you're doing with your enterprise program discount. You could create a custom metric to track that and get rid of these other ones. But with that being said, um, that's a conversation you'll need to have with your organization, whether or not you want to categorize your enterprise program discount as a FinOps savings. Now, the other thing that you need to know when creating a metric like this is that you'll need to generate your API key. You can either do that through front door, which I won't go into today, but the easiest way to do this is if you come here, click on your little profile icon here, click on manage profile, click on preferences, you'll then be able to create your API key here. Once you create your API key here, it's tied to your specific account. So it will recognize that it's you that's doing this. As long as you're a CloudAbility admin, you'll take that API key from here to authorization, send it as a basic authentication, and then plug it in here where I wrote CloudAbility API key. Once you do that, then you'll be able to click send, create, and make this metric as part of something that you can access within CloudAbility. Now, again, if you need help with this, I'd recommend reaching out to CloudAbility support since they need to enable your business metrics anyway. And then from here, and I'll keep this on the screen, you can just copy and paste this metric that you see here on the video or in the article. You can copy that and use that in, in the future as well. With that, those are the different ways that you can use CloudAbility to track your FinOps savings with dashboard widgets and custom business metrics.